Hey, good morning Acacia Church and all our family all over the world. It's a great morning and uh, I don't know if it's raining on your side here, it's, it's pouring heavily. Uh, so you might hear noise uh, of rain falling uh, on the roof. I hope it will not disorganize and compete with the voice. But we praise God for the day and another time that we have together to study the Word of God. And so we're going to pray and jump right into the Word in Titus. So shall we pray? Father, we say thank you this morning. Thank you for the rain that is falling. Thank you for the crops, for those who have it in the gardens and uh, the grasses and, and the rest of the plantations that are also celebrating because they have it. And God, I pray as we study your word together this morning that we will be encouraged by it, that we will be challenged by it, and above it all that we will respond uh, to the truth you're giving to us today from your word. May your blessing be upon each and every one of us who are here this morning together learning from you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So open your Bible to Titus, if you will, Titus chapter 2. We'll get into verse 1 and 2 only. Uh, so take a reading, Titus chapter 2, verse 1 and 2. But as for you, Paul says to Titus, teach what accords with sound doctrine. Older men are to be sober-minded, dignified, self-controlled, sound in faith, sound in love and in steadfastness. Now, the entire chapter 2 of this book deals with sound doctrine, teaching on sound doctrine and the instruction that Apostle Paul gives to Titus as far as the responsibility and relationship and response of different individuals in the church is concerned. And so for the for this entire chapter, I've broken it down into parts. It's, this chapter 2 is going to be a series on teaching of sound doctrine. And, and today, it's going to be the teaching on sound doctrine. Part 1 is men of sound doctrine. Next Sunday, we're going to look at teaching of, on sound doctrine. Part 2, and it will be women of sound doctrine. And after that, it will be leaders of sound doctrine and servants of sound doctrine. So I kind of just want to give you an idea of what we have the next four Sundays, uh, three Sundays minus this one, as far as this chapter is concerned. It's going to be a series on teaching uh, on sound doctrine. Part one will be men, part two will be women, part three will be leaders, and part four will be servants. And so today, the focus of these verses we've just read is men of sound doctrine. And next time we're going to look at women of sound doctrine. So I want to read again. But as for you, Titus, you, pastor, teach what accords with sound doctrine. And then he's going to begin describing what the sound doctrine is and how it affects and how different individuals are supposed to respond to that. How the men are supposed to respond to this, how the women are supposed to respond to that, how the leaders are and how servants are. And so when we say sound doctrine, literally it's dealing with sound teaching, it, this has to do with the teaching that is healthy, that is in line with the body of truth being given. And for us as believers, as followers of Jesus Christ, when we say sound doctrine or sound teaching, this has to be teaching and truth that matches and is in line with who our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is. So for the teaching to be sound, for the doctrine to be sound, it has to be something that matches and is in line with who Jesus Christ is, the work he has done, and the promises he's made, and the word that he's given to us. And of course, we already know from Scripture, first of all, when you read 2 Timothy 3.16, that all Scripture came through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, right? When you read Hebrews 4.12, it tells us the Word of God is living and active and powerful and sharper than two-edged sword, and it tells us the reason and what the power it has to do. When you read Jude, Jude tells us in, in verse 3, says this Word, this truth, this Scripture we have has been delivered or entrusted to the saints 
once and for all. And so as we say sound doctrine, but this is what we're talking about. We're talking about the word that is inspired by the Spirit of God. We're talking about this word that is living and active and powerful. We're talking about this word that has been delivered once and for all to the saints, what came through and from God himself. That is what is sound, that is what is healthy. So to say sound teaching, sound doctrine, the teaching has to be healthy. And what makes it healthy? For it to be a healthy teaching, a healthy doctrine, it has to be based 100% on the delivered word, the inspired inherent word of God given to us by the Spirit of God. So now that we know what sound doctrine or sound teaching is, we get into the men of sound doctrine. The very first thing we see there, I remember I mentioned that the focus of this lesson, this sermon today, it's just on the men, men of sound doctrine. And don't worry, next Sunday we're going to look at women of sound doctrine. So, men of sound doctrine are defined by certain things, and the very first thing it mentions, so look at what it says in verse 2, all the men, remember we've just defined what sound doctrine is, Paul tells the pastor, Titus, as for you as the pastor, remember the verses before in chapter 1, we looked at false teachers. It says, beware of false teachers. And he told us the reason why we were to beware of these false teachers. But as for you, while the false teachers are claiming and pretending to be followers of God and denying him at the same time, while they're dwelling and basing on myth and made up stories and that's what they're teaching, while their desires and motivation is for gain and money and what they can get from the people, you who is built and grounded in the word of God, as for you teach what is in accordance to the truth of God. And this teaching should be this time to the women, to the men, it says older men, older men, mature men is what he's saying. Men are to be one. Men of sound doctrine are sober minded. Now, I want the guys to listen to follow this keenly. Men of sound doctrine are sober minded. And this is why it means to be sober minded means to have a clear mind. It means to be free from any intoxication. It means to not be under any influence, any external influence, any external substance, anything that will make you not have a clear and sound judgment. That's what he's saying. So he says, men of the word, men of sound doctrine, men who are being groomed and built and growing in the word because they're exposed to the truth of the word of God, says they have a sound mind. They have clear judgment, they think clearly, they perceive clearly, their reaction and response is going to be okay and biblical. Why? Because their mind is clear, they're not under any influence of anything external, they're not intoxicated by anything. The only thing that is leading them and guiding them is the Spirit of God who indwells them. The only thing taking place in their life is that their mind is being renewed daily. And for, for us to have a sound mind or a sober mind, it only happens when our minds are being renewed by what? By the Spirit of God, by the Word of God. Remember what Paul said to believers in Rome. It says, do not be conformed to the likeness or the standard of this world, but be transformed. How? How do we get transformed? It says, by having your mind renewed, by the renewing of your mind. So that when your mind is renewed, you say, you know the perfect will of God. So men of sound doctrine, men who are being built and groomed in the word of sound mind. Think about it. Is your mind sound? Is your mind clear? Are you being transformed? Is the Spirit of God at work in your life? Is the Word of God taking root in your life and therefore it's being evident? Can people see and hear and be able to acknowledge and say, that man is a man of God, that man is a follower of Jesus Christ, that man is a believer, that man knows sound doctrine because your life, your teaching, your beliefs, your response, your reaction is all groomed and built on the foundation of the Word of God. Men, sound doctrine, sober-minded. 
The second thing we see that it tells us in this verse is that men of sound doctrine are dignified. And, and what that word means is that they're worthy of respect. Now, sadly, there are many, and it is not just men, certainly there are many people out there who just demand to be respected. They, they, they'll tell you, well, I am so-and-so, so you must respect me. I am so-and-so, you must respect me. And respect is not demanded. Respect is earned. You have to be a respectable person. You have to be someone worthy of respect. And for that to happen, the kind of life you're living, the way you treat people, the way you respond to things, the way you conduct and handle yourself has to be something in that line. And it says, men of sound doctrine, men who knows God, who knows the word, who are living the word out, it says they're dignified, they're respectable, they're worthy of respect. That's what it means. They, they have a, a honorable life. They live a honorable life. That the way... They, they present themselves in their character, in their behaviors, it's different. And see, the reason why their life is different, the reason why they are worthy of respect is because of how they present themselves, how they live, how they treat others, how they, they behave and interact and conduct themselves in general. But that only happens, their life is different only because the Word of God that they're reading, that they're studying, that is being taught, that they're responding to, is doing something in their life. You see a man, you see a woman, you see a person who has no value, who has no respect for others, that person has issues. They need Jesus. So the way you treat other people, the way you respond, the way you relate with other people is very important. It defines the kind of man you are, defines the kind of person you are. So before you demand for the respect, the question is, do you respect others? Before you demand to be valued, do you put value on others? Because so many a times we demand, well, you must do this, you must treat me this way, you must value me this way, you must A, B, C, D, when we are the opposite of that. And when it comes to this, the respect, being honored, we don't demand for it. We earn it. We ought to live a life that's worthy of that. And the only way that can be possible is if we are allowing the Word of God to train us, to groom us, to convict us, to break us in areas that it needs to be. And our prayers as men, our prayers as believers should be, God, break my heart for what breaks yours. God, lead me. God, groom me. God, build me. God, use me. It says, men sound doctrine are dignified they're honorable as people in their character in and their behaviors and therefore that makes them worthy of respect makes people want to honor them to respect them to put them in high esteem and accord not because they're demanding for it not because they'll put it as a condition you must do this but because of how they're living their life that is worthy of the gospel of jesus christ Remember when, when Paul wrote to believers in Philippi, Philippians 1, 27? It says, whatever happens, conduct yourselves, present yourselves in what? In a manner worthy of the gospel. And as long as pleasing God and living for God's glory and living to present the gospel in our lives is our goal, is our priority, is our driving force, that is going to happen. So, as... Men out there are with men of sound doctrine. And if you say, yes, are you sober-minded? Is your mind clear? Are you being renewed daily by the Spirit of God, by the Word of God? Or are you filling it, filling your mind with a different uh, substance? You're being intoxicated, you're drinking. The lies and, and the kind of things you're feeding yourself are things that are not worthy. Things that when you read Colossians, Paul says we should put them off. What are we allowing to go in? 
What are we allowing to get into our lives? What are we allowing to speak in our lives? Men of sound doctrine are dignified. And the third thing he mentions is that men of sound doctrine are self-controlled. So he says older men are to be sober-minded. Right? Older men are to be dignified, to be respectable. That's what he's saying. Live a respectable life. Older men to be self-controlled. Self-controlled. Now, this is, this is what this word means, self-control. As I was studying, this, I enjoyed studying this passage and just looking at each of this word in the Greek text, and it was just great. But this word, self-control, this is what it means. It was like interesting. It says, in the Greek passage, this word means someone who is safe to be around. Someone who is safe to be around. And this is what it means. This person actually is going to protect you and shield you from danger or any attack if it were to come as long as you're with them. They're not going to be the one that will bring trouble. They're not going to be the one that is going to either hurt you, destroy you, beat you, cause harm on you. They're going to shield you. They're going to protect you from it. It was interesting to just look at the, the dynamics of that word, self-control. I want to have, ask this question. Are you safe to be around? As a man, as a father, as a husband, are you safe to be around? Do your children feel safe when you are at home? Does your wife feel safe when you are at home? Or the moment you get back, they're scared. They're afraid because you're going to be beating the children, you're going to be beating your wife, and everything at home is going to be in trouble. Men of sound doctrine, men of the word, self-control, they're safe to be around. And the other meaning of this word is they're able to control their desires, they're able to control their impulses. They're able to bring it under control. And that only happens because we have surrendered to God, because we've yielded to Him, and He's now guiding, He's now leading. Remember when you read Ephesians chapter 5, the command there, verse 25, to the men, to the husbands, is to love, is to value, to respect, and treat our, our spouses and our family the way Christ has loved us, valued us, and treated us. And so this can only be possible if this God who loved us so much to the point of giving His Son for us is changing us, He's guiding us, He's leading us. So that, that's why as Paul is writing this letter to Titus, he begins by telling him, you need to teach them the truth, you need to give them the Word of God because it's only the Word of God that can change the hearts of man. Only the Word of God. So men, are you self-controlled? Are you safe to be around? Is your home a castle, a safe harbor? Or is it a battle zone? Is it a battlefield? And you are the monster. And you are the bad guy. It's, it's very sad. It's, it's, it's heartbreaking that in, in many homes, and sadly, many Christian homes, there's trouble, there's fight, there's chaos all over because the men are not safe to be around. The men are bullied, the men are not protecting, they're not loving, they're not caring, that they're not these men who are shocked in the word, who are leaving the word of God out. It's very important. Self-control. So, the ability of putting your feelings in check. And that means something might annoy you. You might get annoyed. But what do you do when, when, when you're angry? What, what do you do when, when you're not emotionally okay? Do you burst out like a volcano? Or do you come down? Are you, do you... Are you able to put that 
feeling that emotion in check and let it cool. That's what it means. See, the Word of God has the power to change us and help us live this kind of life. The men of, the, of sound doctrine are also sound. Sound one in faith. It says, all the men of the Word that what? Sober-minded, that dignified, self-controlled, and it says sound in faith. Now, the, the Greek word to be sound in faith presents, in its writing, it's in the present continuous. It's an ongoing action. And in the Greek passage, the, the word, this verse, it's actually is written this way, being sound in faith. Constant, ongoing process. So, so that it, it's not a one-time thing. Well, yesterday I was sound in faith. I was okay. I, I lived, I believed, I trusted, I served. And well, today things are different. So uh, don't tell me about Jesus. Don't tell me about being sound in faith. That, that's not what this verse presents. This verse presents a, an ongoing action, a present continuous tense. Yesterday you were sound in faith. Today you are. Tomorrow you will be. Because it's an ongoing action. It's something that's never ending. Because we believe in a God who is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow he will be. It's interesting. Sound in faith. Now, to understand the depth of this word that Paul uses here, sound in faith, when you know what, what faith is and where it comes from. See, faith is sourced in God. God is the source of our faith. Without God, there's no faith. Right? So God is the source of faith. Right? So that means to be sound in faith means to be rooted in the healthy teaching that's about God and is from God. Sound in faith, you're rooted, your belief, the, the person and the things you're putting your faith, believing in and trusting in and relying in has to be God. And because God is the source of our faith, God is the one who sustains us in our faith, something happens. If we're going to be sound in our faith, then we have to be exposed to, we have to be feeding on and, and spending time in the word of this God who is the author of our faith and the author of our salvation, the perfect and the finisher of our faith. It has to be Him. So sound faith is built and grounded and, and completely in God and God alone. In Christ alone, our hope is found. Why? Because He is our light and our strength. The solid rock that we stand on. In Christ alone. You're sounding your faith. Now the question is, what or who is your source of teaching? What is your source of teaching? Who or who is your source? So, as you teach or being, you're being told, what's the source of that? Because if it is not grounded, again, I'm putting you back to this. If it's not grounded in the Word of God and in God and God alone, and it's completed in the finished work of Christ on the cross, then you are believing in something that is not sound, and what you have is not from the God who is the author and the perfecter of our faith. It has to be Him. We cannot go to someone or something else to give us information, to give us a teaching about a God they don't know, a God they don't serve, a God they've never re responded to. Believing. It has to be God. So, who is your source of information? Or what is your source of information? Can you verify it? See, there are many, many men and women out there who have their different sources. Someone will come and say, well, you see, as I was coming, I had a dream last night. I had this, I had this, A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D, 
and and then they begin pouring whatever it is they have for you is that from god does it fit with this written inspired inherent absolute authoritative word of god anyone who is going to come and tell you that yeah well yeah the word of god says that the bible says that but that is trouble anyone who is going to do that says yeah the bible says that yeah i i, I know the word of god says that but you also pay attention to this but listen to this also there's trouble there is the bible your resource book is it where you get the teaching you get the inspiration you get the instruction you get the direction and the source of transformation from is the bible your source or it's someone or something it also says be sound in love be sound in love and the word that he uses for love here is agape which is of course the sacrificial the unconditional kind of love the god's kind of love that was revealed demonstrated for us in that while we were still seen as christ that that's the kind of love and, and the the usage here in the plural sense of saying your practice of love is not just for one person not just for two not just for now but what do you do even when there are many people will you still constantly do that but it says the way we love is supposed to be like god has loved us the way we minister the way we get to others should be in the same way and the last part we see says should also be sound in endurance esv uses the word in steadfastness sound in endurance and this is what it means you're able to remain in the faith even during trials. So even when trials hit, when circumstances changes and things are not going well, you're still able to remain firm in that faith, firm in what you know and believe, and who you believed in. For I'm persuaded, you know that, that word, that, that verse, convinced, he will begin this work in you to bring it to completion. The work of salvation, he will. So sound in endurance, you need to hold fast. It says men of sound doctrine who are going to be willing and able to hold fast to their faith even during trials. You know why? Because their faith is built on nothing less than Jesus Christ and his righteousness. Holding firm bearing being able to endure trials bravely and calmly says that's what defines man of sound doctrine so man of sound doctrine as we wind up is sober-minded clear in mind only being renewed the dignified worthy of respect the self-control the safe to be around and the protector the sound in their faith because they believe in Christ and Christ alone the sound in love how they love and how they treat and and this one is very important if it's the love of God that motivates that directs that controls us then the way I treat my family members will be the way I treat the other member the way I treat my my trapsmate my classmate is going to be the way I treat the other person there's not going to be any segregation there's not going to be difference there's not going to be any racial issues because we're loving just like God has loved us and God demonstrated his love for us that while we were all yet sinners black and white rich and poor slave and free any and all of us he died his son died for us it says that's the kind of love i've demonstrated for you and that's the kind of love paul is mentioning here that if we are men of the word men of sound doctrine the, our love for people are going to be the same irrespective of the skin color irrespective of their financial status irrespective of their political sign or whatever and whatever they have we are going to love them the same because like paul says in corinthians the love of christ will compel us because we've concluded one thing that jesus christ died for all therefore there is no 
flee, free or slave, rich or poor, male or female, in Christ we are one. We all are indwelt by the Spirit of God through whom we cry above Father. And he also says, because of that, we're going to be able to endure suffering and trials and hardship while holding on, clinging on, holding fast to our faith. What faith? The one that is built on nothing less than Jesus Christ and his righteousness. The one that is built on the one who loved us while we were still sinners and died for us. The one that was demonstrated on the cross. And the power was proven when Jesus Christ rose from the dead. So men, can it be said of you that you are a man of sound doctrine? Let us think about this this week. Let us pray on this. And I, and I hope and pray that we will allow this word change, groom, build, and transform us to be the men this generation that the world needs today. Men were going to stand for the truth. Men were going to love everyone the same, irrespective of who they are and their background, because Jesus Christ has loved them the same way. I'll see you on Sunday as we look at women of sound doctrine. Don't forget it. I I'm excited and I'm looking forward to having you as well. God bless you. Let's Get to Acacia Church page and enjoy some worship uh, with Brian and Matthias and Joseph uh, as the leaders today in worship. And don't forget our midweek service is also every Thursday at 5 p.m. And we're starting through First Peter. God bless you. We love you and we're praying for you. Men, don't forget, we need to be men of sound doctrine.